this year's winner of the Grand Champion Award is the Himmendorf Box, Bobby Stanfield. Seagulls, the various versions of his delightful kinetic carousel, 
and for his Rokukus. Bevan issued the original Rokuku Challenge of 1982 that has been kept running for an amazing 11 years and is still going strong internationally. Margo's kites include several fine, fanciful flyers, beautifully decorated, and a Rokuku to match Bevan's and to make a pair. Since Bevan and Margo are an example of that rare breed these days, a truly devoted couple. Margo was a founding member of Mama Sons International Women's Rokuku Kite Team and in 1985 provided lavender t-shirts for all the teammates. Bevan and Margo have given kite workshops or helped on them on a regular basis for many years. Every year since 1976, the Bevans and the Browns have taken on the responsibility for the pre-festival educational Smithsonian workshop and lecture, which are now very largely in their hands. Bevan and Margo have been participants in the Smithsonian Kite Festival every year since 1968. With their children, Rochelle, Vincent, and Stephanie, they would regularly sweep up the trophies, always including the family trophy. Now retired from competition, they watch as their grandchildren come along and get closer to the age to compete. Although competitiveness, competitiveness is not a dominant feature of their personalities, sharing is. They have been sharing big time since about 1976, when they started the tradition of the Browns' open house each year after the Smithsonian, after working all day at the Smithsonian. In addition, they have for several years opened their home to overnight kite guests who travel from distant locations to attend the festival. Of course, the biggest help the Browns give to the Smithsonian Festival is in directing it, which they have been doing gradually since 1976, when Paul Garber and his wife Buttons began to need help. Also, the Smithsonian resident associates who run the festival did not have the thorough grounding in kites that the Browns brought to the job. The Browns have worked quietly to improve the Smithsonian without violating the traditions set up by Paul and Buttons and without alienating the institutional sponsorship. The latest 1993 Smithsonian, the first after the death of Paul Garber, was an unusual valiant effort to beat the rain which the Browns and their recruits managed to do in style. Perhaps the most important services for kiting performed by the Browns have been those in the relationship to Paul Garber personally. They cared for him in their home several months after he suffered a stroke in 1991. They were speakers at the services held for him at the Arlington National Cemetery in 1992. These days, the Browns are serving as conservators of historic kiting materials, including some of them left by Paul. Also, Margo is taking up the work on Paul's unfinished aerial biography. Paul was never much for autos. Furthermore, the Browns are giving three days a week of time to the Smithsonian, especially to the Paul Garber Preservation, Restoration, and Storage Facility in Silver Hill, Maryland, where aircraft is cared for before transfer to the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. The Garber facility is home to a number of historic kites collected by Paul over the years. With the aid and encouragement of the Browns, the kites will be placed on display once again in 1997 for a five-year period. In the meantime, visitors can visit the Garber facility to see the kites. Margo gave up a day of her time to make sure visitors had this opportunity, even when the facility was booked solid in the height of the tourist season. Finally, Margo is continuing to work for a series of U.S. postage stamps in commemoration of kites, as first outlined some years ago by Paul Garber. There are reasons any year for awarding the Browns with the Etiquette Trophy, but it is because of their recent continued devotion to good works of long-time term value for kiting that we particularly recommend them now for the recognition they deserve. Respectfully submitted, Valerie Gobig, Mel Gobig, Peter Nuzzi, and Arnold Simon. festivals throughout Asia, North America, and Europe. Scott has forged friendships with flyers, organizers, and artists throughout the globe and utilized those contacts to strengthen communication and friendships, friendships among all. Now Scott is beginning to coordinate tours and trips which share his resources and experience with newer kiters and travelers. His articles and observations have regularly appeared in kiting and other periodicals. He has also personally financed the travel of international flyers to the U.S. on several occasions so that others could share their talents. Also through his travels and contacts, Scott has amassed one of the premier collections of international kites in North America.
Pieces have been shared on special occasions, but principally the Skinner Collection is a growing treasure which will prove to be a major resource of future kite enthusiasts. As a promoter of kite craftsmanship, Scott has encouraged international artists to contribute works for traveling exhibits which will help communicate the breadth and beauty of kiting to people around the world. His exhibit is currently on display in the Pacific Science Center in Seattle and will be shown next in Tokyo, Japan. Scott is a major supporter of the, Long, of the World Kite Museum in Long Beach, Washington, and publishes a magazine of kite information which assists the museum's educational outreach programs. Scott has served many years as AKA Regional Director for an area that encompasses 11 states. He chairs the AKA International Committee, worked to complete the AKA Comprehensive Rulebook, and helped coordinate the Denver's Child at Heart Kite Festival in both 1991 and 1992. He is active with his local kite club in Colorado. Finally, this nomination would not be complete if it did not comment on Scott Skinner as a person. He is well known and well liked. Scott has the unique ability to avoid conflicts and discord that often disrupt the kite community. His easygoing manner and open style have contributed greatly to modern kiting. Nominated by Kay Leasing and Ed and Bonnie Wright. Please travel home carefully when you do, and thanks again for joining us at this 16th annual convention.